G'day. Welcome back to Down the Share with Byron. On today's episode, changing out the front brakes on the Mazda CX-7. So to do the job, a couple of tools you may require, a few spanners, a screwdriver, a hammer, um, some consumables, a bit of WD-40, some brake clean, uh, brake lube, but sometimes that comes in the kit, a bit of Loctite, a few rags, uh, optional, uh, I've got that one man brake bleeding kit, I'll show you that, and the brake caliper pushing tool, pushes the pistons back in, but I'll show you a little trick for that one. Right, hey, let's get into it. Also, parts for the job. I'm changing both rotors, pads, and a bottle of brake fluid just to top it up. Popping the bonnet to check the brake fluid level before starting. Jack the car up under the front chassis rail. Place the jack stand under the lower control arm mount. Remove the wheel, throw that under the car for now. I've turned the wheel to the right to gain access to the caliper. With access to the front caliper now, we'll start by undoing the two 17mm retaining bolts that hold the caliper in place. So at this stage, you can leave that top bolt in there loosely, pry up your caliper, and remove your pads. Now there's a couple of ways you can go about pushing these pistons back in to the um, caliper. Just remember when you do push them back in, the brake fluid that's in behind them will either go back to the reservoir or you can crack the bleed nipple. So one way you can push these pistons back in is by leaving the brake pads in there, using your screwdriver, placing it if you can, wriggle the caliper back and forth till you've got enough gap between the pad and the rotor. Now push the piston back in, just remembering what you do at the top will be opposite at the bottom because the fluid's trying to push through and push that one out. So just do the same down the bottom. Another way of doing this is lift the caliper up and using an old brake pad, holding that against the pistons and that caliper tool, placing it in place and winding it in. Now again, what you're doing is you're pushing in that top piston and then that one's going to be trying to come out but because you've got the pad there, it kind of equals out. So you just do a bit there, and then go down to the bottom and go again, and do the same again, until you've got those pistons all the way home. What I'd advise doing before pushing those pistons back in is remove the bleed nipple cap, get your eight mil spanner, the brake bleeding kit, place it over the nipple, then cracking it, now push those pistons in. So now what you're doing is you're pushing any of this old brake fluid that's in the caliper back out. And depending on your scenario, you could probably do a brake flush here, but yep, it's whatever stage you're up to. Push them in, tighten it back up, and remove. Put your dust cap back on. Now those pistons are all pushed back in. Finish off removing that top bolt for your caliper and then we'll hang that out the way. So just use a cable tie or a bit of tie wire to hang the caliper out of the way so you haven't got stress on that brake line. To get the brake rotor off now, we need to remove the brake caliper bracket. To do that, there's two 19mm bolts Hold that in place at the back here. We'll undo those and we should be able to pull the rotor off. Moving on to the brake rotor, sometimes there will be a Phillips head screw which will be holding the disc in place and um, I'll show you a trick of getting them out. Let's just pretend I've got the screws there. If you use a 
large Phillips head screw driver, just a sacrifice one. Placing it inside this Phillips head, using your hammer on the end, and holding pressure in the undo direction. Hit the end of the screwdriver with the hammer as you do that. And that sometimes, and most of the time, cracks that. Unscrew those two Phillips heads. And remove the disc. Now if that's seized on there, spray a bit of CRC or WD-40 around the hub. And then give the disc a decent hit. Now if you're saving the disc, or going to get it machined, I'd be using a soft faced hammer. Or a block of wood and your metal hammer. But if you hit it each spot, so 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and if that doesn't come off, there's a little jacking bolt hole here that you can use. But most of the time it should come off with the hammer. Once you get it started, use a ratchet and just slowly wind it in. And once it pushes up against the hub face on the other side, So what it'll do, it'll push on this hub face, it'll push the rotor on an angle and it'll crack whatever rust or seal is in place. Before refitting your new disc or machine disc, make sure you give this surface area a decent wire brush with either a wire brush or a little drill with the wire brush attachment works really well. using brake clean, give it a good wash, making sure you've got no debris left there before fitting the rotor. With your new brake rotor, or the one you've just picked up from the machine shop, because you got it machined, they have a corrosion protection film that they spray on here. To clean that off, use a bit of brake clean, and a clean rag, and wipe that off. I do the same on the inside just to make sure there's no loose debris. Now we'll fit it. With the brake rotor refitted, you can reinstall your screws that hold the disc in place. Or if you don't have them, don't stress about them. Give the brake rotor another quick clean, making sure that it's clean. Before reinstalling the brake caliper bracket, inspecting it, making sure it's not cracked or anything, give it a good clean with the brake clean again. Giving that a wipe over. And while you're there, also inspecting these little retaining clips, making sure they're not worn out or got a hole in them. Now these are reusable, we'll throw them back in. So if you've taken those little retaining clips out and can't remember which way they go in, here's a little demo of how I've put them back in. Now we'll fit the bracket back up. What I'll do is I'll just put one bolt in to start off with just to get the bracket in place because sometimes it can be tricky and screw it in a few turns just to hold it in place. With the other bolt, just apply a small amount of Loctite to it. I'm just using medium strength. Locate it, screw that one in. Then remove the bottom one, apply some Loctite, and reinstall. With the caliper bracket bolts done up now, I grab the actual caliper bolt, apply a little bit of lube onto them, I'll show you what that is in a minute, just a bit of that, make sure that inside these slides 
they move nice and freely. Do the same with both bolts. And there we have it. This is the brake lube that I use. Now reinstall your caliper. Pull the top bolt out, put the top bolt back in. Just screw it in a couple of turns. Pull the bottom bolt back out again. Now what we'll do, we'll fit the brake pads. Time now for the brake pads. I'm just using some DBAs. Um, in this kit comes with the brake pad lube. And I'll uh, show you what we use that for, or where I apply it. Set of brake pads, and it's got little wear indicators that you can attach to the brake pads. All I'd done was copied the old one and pushed it over and locked it in place. I just apply that brake lube just to wear spots. So if you're not sure where they are, you just have a look at these little retaining clips of where the pad normally sits. Now you think when you're driving, that pad's always vibrating. So that's the idea. So I just put it in the other color as well so you can see. Now to install the pad, locate it into the holder. So with the pad located in the bottom there, you can push it against the springs, which are these little retaining clips, slide it into place. And that's in. Same on the inside. Before dropping the caliper down, I put a bit more of that loop just on the insides here, just a smear. And bring that down over the pads. Now, if you're having dramas getting the caliper to slide over like that, it's because those pistons aren't home far enough or the brake road is not squared up. So just wriggle around with that. Reinstall the lower caliper bolt. And again, just a couple of threads in. And what we'll do, we'll put a touch of Loctite on each thread there. Then we'll tighten them up. Brakes are back together. Now, double check your brake fluid, top up as required. Give the brake pedal a pump until it goes solid, nice and hard. And what you've done there is you've pushed brake fluid back down the hose to the back of the pistons, pushed it out. Now this is all pre-set up and good to go for a drive. Just recheck your brake fluid and again, top up if it needs. With the wheel back on, tighten up wheel nuts and recheck the torque of them with a breaker bar once it's back on the ground. So I've just taken the Mazda for a test drive and bedded the brakes in. The procedure for this, um, according to the Bendix brake pads, is just uh, ride the brake pedal for a bit, not too far, just enough to in initially um, warm them up, then go for a drive down the road and this procedure goes 10 times. So you've got to go 50 kilometers an hour and then medium braking to about 10, then take off again. Do that 10 times. Uh, then no hard braking for 200 kilometers, but it's the wife's car. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. So I've gone through that. Um, I'm happy with that job. So I hope this video helps you out. Uh, if there's any other tips we can give others, put it in the comments. Otherwise, take it easy.